Uh, we are here on behalf of Africa Life Youth Foundation. It is such a privilege to be here. And today, uh, it is a very interesting time. Normally, uh, we have been coming over here and sharing with you about Jesus because I know this school loves Jesus so much, right? Yeah, yeah you should clap for yourselves about that because there's nothing, there's nothing more important than loving Jesus. So I know this school is in the Christian foundation and it's so wonderful to have a whole big choir up here singing and dancing for the Lord. It's so very wonderful. Amen. Um, speaking against abortion, okay? Speaking against abortion and speaking against things to do uh, with homosexuality and stuff like that. Okay? Yeah. Alright? Yeah. Are you guys ready for that? Yeah. yeah, I know you're ready. So this is concerning both boys and the girls, right? Yeah. Uh, both the boy and the girl child. I was looking at the mission statement on your wall in the building over there. That's a really good mission statement. Your mission statement, let me see if I can remember it. To raise, I, I have the three points in my mind. People who fear God, amen? amen? Young people who fear God. You know, the book of Hebrews says, don't be afraid of the person who is able to destroy just your body, but fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul forever in hell. Amen? Fear God. Fear God. The book of Proverbs says, The fear of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Something told me, something told me that you could finish that for me. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. We love God, but because we're not perfect yet. Amen? God is still working on me, and God is still working on you. So even though we love God, there's still room for holy fear. Holy fear in our hearts. Amen? Amen. To always remind us about the danger of sin. Now, I want to tell you about um, a young girl. How many people here are 14 or 15? Can you raise your hand? 14 or 15 years old. 14 or 15 years old. Okay? Some 14 or 15 year olds in here? Hallelujah. Well, how many of you know, how many of you know that there was a young woman, if you have a Bible with you, please turn with me to the book of Luke. The Gospel according to Luke, if you have a Bible. And I'll read it for you if you don't have your Bible with you. No problem. Let me just say before I before I say anything else, I came down with um, food poisoning last night, and I'm, I'm feeling kind of sick. I just came from the hospital. My friends here picked me up from the hospital, so you see me perspiring, sweating a little bit, and feeling a little sick. I'm I'm getting better. They gave me some good medicine, but uh, before I start reading from the Book of Luke, let me just warn you: be careful what you eat. <laughs> Sure. Be careful what you eat. I think I ate a little something at a restaurant that had been left sitting out too long, so just be careful, amen? Yeah. Be careful. We don't want to give the devil an uh, opportunity. You know, I think the devil wanted to keep me from speaking to you tonight, from enjoying the joy of your fellowship tonight. I really think that's what's happening. I really think that's what he wanted to do. But glory to God, here I am, amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. So, thank you for being patient with me. I'm a little bit sick, uh, but everything's going to be all right. Turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. Bible scholars, the people who study the Bible, the people who are the experts at the biblical languages, uh, the book of Luke was written in mostly in the language of Greek. I don't know if you know that, but mostly in the language of Greek, when uh, our brother Achille, who sang so well for us here, when he first told me his name, I just met him a few moments ago, I thought his name was Achilles. Achilles is a famous Greek 
a uh, hero, famous Greek warrior, but Achilles got a good, uh, a good African name and, and a wonderful musician. By the way, sister, brother, you really blessed my heart. Amen? Amen. Can we just give a hand one more time for brother and sister here? I know they're going to come back and, and give us some more uh, musical joy and get us moving and, and dancing. Amen? But there's a girl in the book of Luke who Bible scholars say was maybe, probably 14 or 15 years old, like so many of you, close to most of your ages. Most of the people here, pretty close to your age. How many of you think you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about Mary, Mary, the mother of our Lord, Mary, the one who carried Jesus Christ in her womb. Luke chapter one, Verse 26, in the sixth month, God sent an angel, the angel Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was? Mary. 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 The angel went to her and said, greetings, greetings you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Now Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. That's verse 29. Verse 29, let me read that again. Mary was greatly troubled at his words, at the word of the angel. Why do you think Mary was greatly troubled when the angel told her, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Can I suggest to you that the reason that Mary was greatly troubled was because Mary was a girl who feared God? Amen? Amen? She feared God. And so for an angel to appear to her, a holy angel of God, and to give her such a word as this, that God had highly favored her, she felt what we were talking about a moment ago, holy fear. The fear of standing in the presence of an angel that ministers at the throne of God. Amen? Amen. So Mary was greatly troubled at his words, wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom, hallelujah, his kingdom will never end. Amen? Amen. Now we know, how, we know how Mary answered, and the angel described to her what would happen. Turn to, uh, let's skip to verse 35. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Now skip, skip with me to verse 39. Almost done here. Verse 39, at that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. Now this is after the Holy Spirit had already overshadowed this 14 or 15 year old girl, Mary, and created in her womb the Lord God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. She was carrying God inside her body. So her cousin Elizabeth... She goes to visit, excuse me, her cousin Elizabeth. So Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth, now at this time Elizabeth is pregnant with who? John the Baptist. John the Baptist, amen? So she's a little bit further along than Mary, than Mary is. Verse 41, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. A loud voice, in a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is this child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Let me read that one more time. I'll just repeat it. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Amen? Amen. 
And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Oh, Father God, bow your heads with me. Father God, we are your children. We come before you in the holy name of Jesus, and we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to learn from your word, to receive your word. Mary received the word from the angel. Lord, you have given us a word directly from your Holy Spirit, and we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for that word. Now let it germinate, let it cook in our hearts, Lord, and let it bear fruit in all of us. And let your word not go forth void. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, thank you very much. For that. I want you to think about the position that Mary was put in when the angel appeared to her. You know, there were many people who didn't want Jesus Christ to come into this world. Do you know that? There are many people, including the king of that region, King Herod. So God took a 14 or 15 year old girl and sent a mighty powerful angel, a powerful angel to visit her and she was put right into the middle of the battle, the battle that our sister was talking about here in her song. God took a, a child, what we would normally think of as a child, but this blessed woman, God, the scripture calls her a woman, Mary, and said, I'm going to put you right in the middle of a battle. People are going to try to kill Jesus Christ. Herod was going to try to kill her baby. We know the story, right? Herod was going to try to kill her baby before he even accomplished his mission, before he even got to be three years old. But God chose to take Mary and Joseph but specifically to take this 15-year-old girl, 14 or 15, just think about that, and put her up against, in a battle up against the rulers of this world. Let me tell you, you are also in a battle, amen? amen. You and I are in a battle, and we're in a battle against enemies that are far greater than us, far more powerful than us, in the flesh, in physical strength. But like Mary, we have, if we will cling to the Word of God, if we will believe the promises that God has given us, amen? amen. We can stand. Yes. We can stand. Do you realize what happened in the womb of Mary? I don't understand how it happened. I know it happened by the power of God. But God was inside her womb. You see, the Apostle Paul calls Jesus Christ the second Adam. And if you remember from the book of Genesis, the way that the first Adam was formed, he was formed from the clay, from the dust of the earth, right? Yeah. As a fully formed, grown human being. Now God could have made, God could have fulfilled prophecy and made Jesus Christ in the same way. He could have taken, he could have taken, um, he could have taken some of the seed of David and just made a fully formed, grown human being. Jesus Christ. But God chose to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to pass through every stage of human life in the womb of Mary. Amen? Amen. See, you and I started out in our mother's wombs exactly the way Jesus Christ started out, as a single cell. A single cell. The difference is, the difference is there was no man. There was no man. This was a virgin birth. But other than that, other than the miracle of the incarnation, when God did something to the egg that Mary had to make it fertilized by the power of the Holy Spirit so that he would grow in her womb. Other than that, Jesus Christ passed through all the stages of human life that you and I went through. He was a single cell. He split. He divided. He grew. All his organs differentiated. You see, God was allowing himself how many of you know that Jesus is God? Jesus is God, amen? Yeah. God the Son, hallelujah? Yeah. God